Welcome, welcome, welcome again to another episode of Not Only Screw Guy. Coming at you from Denver, Colorado. Today, we're going to take a look at Linux Mint 21.1 Vera, codename Vera. And uh, yeah, it just came out not too long ago. And so we're going to take a look and see what's new in it. Let's go over to the the uh, video of Linux Mint. Now, on this, I've... Uh, I've uh, telegraphed, teleported it over from the other machine. And if for some reason Linux Mint didn't like my video capture card, it wouldn't show anything but just blank screen, just this logo and all this stuff, but it didn't show the panel. It would only show the cursor on occasion. It's real radical. Erratic, I should say. So let's get to it and see what we got here in Linux Mint now. I know it's off the bat that it looks like a cleaner desktop. That's because of all these icons over here. Over right there. All the icons are right to the wrong there. No longer there. They're gone. Icon for files down here. Your Nemo file manager. And Firefox and your terminal right there. As well as you've got uh, these iFavorite icons. Your start. Your quit. Quit or reboot. The restart phase, your logout phase, and uh, your lock, the lock screen. There's Nemo again, terminal again, settings, your software manager stores right there, and Firefox, all in one shop. So it's a cleaner desktop, and it's also a little bit more vibrant colors now. The things that are vibrant colors are mainly icon sets and folders. But uh, there's only certain ones that are more vibrant. Breeze is more vibrant. Amix, Yaru, more vi vibrant. And, on, and those only have certain icons themselves that are more vibrant than they used to be. So it's not quite as jarring as maybe, uh, you know, some other. Hey, let's see what those are. Here, control. Over here, you have icons, right? Under themes, I believe. Yeah. Here you have your icons. They have default to aqua, but you can select whatever kind you want. Like you like orange, you like the orange set, pink set, or whatever. Like that, suddenly it looks oranger. Now here you see the folders are a little bit different, a little brighter than they were before. So yeah, that's some of the differences you might see there. So the window out for now. And you also can do desktop icons. Here's where if you want to set as that you would like or like the desktop icons. Here's the default I think for cinnamon. Every more modern mouse pointer you may have noticed it's, it's a kind of a rounded shape the rounded shape there's no tail on it that's a more modern mouse pointer that's another change you made another change you made is they have new system sounds of course you can get two by in that here and go to settings I need to move my face out of the way out of here Sound right there. You have your system sounds here. Your system. Under sounds, of course. Here you have different sound, sound system sounds. You can you can play around with those and check those out if you want. I'm not showing those on here because I'm limited what I can do. But yeah, it's under uh, system setting sounds. Down tab. I mean, the driver manager has been updated in this system. So take a peek at that and see what differences are. Now, main difference I think you'll notice is that you don't have to enter a password when you enter the driver manager itself application. You will have to do if you need any drivers installed. Of course, you have to enter your your password there. But 
So now when you go in the application parent, it's been changed. Previous times where you probably had to enter a password when you were upon entering the application itself. So, but yeah, I use driver manager more out on the, my living room computer, which has an NVIDIA driver in it. So, yeah, that worked out pretty well. Once I got that package manager, broken that package manager fixed, it worked all right. <laughs> And uh, but anyway, you just go to this pretty simple process. Go down here. You can type in up here driver manager. There it is. Hit enter. Looking for drivers. Of course, in this thing, I think it'll say nothing needed. No drivers needed, but if you do need drivers, you have an NVIDIA card or, or a certain. A uh, wireless card needs updating or something. It'll do, it'll do that. It'll give you the drivers you need. You install them. That's when you probably have to do a pseudo password manager. It'll give you a list of the drivers you have options for. Pick the one you want and install it. It actually works pretty simple. Once, as long as your package manager works. <laughs> it doesn't. This doesn't either. Also has updated software manager, gives you more control and options, it says. Take a peek at that now. Finally, now you ramp software manager. It's this thing here. And it's pretty good and practical software manager. I want to show you something here though. Let's see. OBS, like you wanted OBS installed. It's already installed, but but uh, you can tell it's already installed by the little green check mark up here. It's already installed. But uh, this is from FlatHub. Now, yeah, you can see they tell you all along here. FlatHub package. FlatHub, they tell you what, what it's going to default to is when you, when you try to install it, what it's going to pull from. And I think in some cases, like say, but I don't want Flatback, I want the package manager, repository manager, from system repositories. Yeah, you can choose system packages if you want a system package on it. Like that. Pretty cool, huh? We'll pull up system package and screenshots available and you install it from your system package manager if you want it to. So that's another cool thing. Like this 27.2.3 is the one you're going to get version. So flat pack, I think it's 28 point something. Now 28.1.2 version on flat pack. So usually get more updated versions of flat packs than you do in the system repositories but it's 27 point whatever works for you that's good you can get it from repositories and also the cool thing about this is that uh, we'll get it to when we get the update manager but yeah it'll update flat packs on the whole system is, is built to update not only repositories but flat packs which is ideal for me I tend to use a lot of flat packs in my builds like this and stuff, so yeah, it works real good. Updates on the software manager. Then we'll go back up here to there. Now the update manager is a, it's got some cool features. And I'll show you a couple of those, even ones that may be already on there since previous versions. Just because they're kind of new to me a bit, so why not? Make sure you know about them as well. So anyway, yeah, if you go to Update Manager, Update. Update Manager's right there. And it says your system is up to date, and the reason for that is because it's so. Yeah, this is pretty updated and updated apparently. Well, I had four updates in there, but I have it set to automatically update, and so it's already updated apparently. 
I don't have anything to show you, but it gives you the list of these of what needs to be updated. And you can check off the ones you want to update and uncheck the ones you don't. So that's cool. I'll show you how to do our enable all Mac updates. Up here to F5 or edit one and two. You're up here to edit and see. Okay, you now you get preferences, you have over here automation. It says make sure your system snapshots are properly configured for using this option. You want to do that in time shift basically. And so in other words, every time it'll update, it'll take a snapshot too at the same time. Let me move my head out of the way here a minute. You can see this better, hopefully. And you have all this stuff. And you have a apply updates automatically selected. You can update cinnamon spices automatically, update plant packs automatically, and remove obsolete to pick kernels and dependencies. You can just check this off and it'll update your system. You can check these off and love to your plat packs and cinnamon spices automatically. And if you want to remove all, have it automatically remove obsolete kernels and dependencies, you check that off too. So I have all those checked and it seems to work pretty well. Both this machine and machine out there in the living room. Cool. This is my lawn, I think the only other just from aware of that, that does plat. Does all Mac update that I'm aware of at least is Fedora. And Fedora's problem is, is that it has a rolling release basis, so you have more questions and answers. And if you aren't there to answer questions, we'll sit there and, and until you know if some breaks or something like that, just through any distro. But with a stable release like this, you have more or less a chance of that happening, basically. Ask less questions for you and stuff like things like that. You can put in blacklist. I don't think this is new. I don't think automation is new. This era, but I think some of you may not have been aware of it or something. I wasn't until the automation. I especially like the automation, but I think the what's new to the system and that is more controls. You have more options. You have you can update flat packs or you cannot update flat packs. Maybe you choose choices in that regard. Maybe you don't use fly packs, so you don't want it to go to the trouble to update them. We also have uh, ISO verification added to this, which you can get by going to the here. So if you if you were to, I don't have any ISOs in here, unfortunately. If you did, you can go to ISO wherever you store them Most people store them in downloads. And you'll be able to right click on it. One of the options here would be to to verify ISO. So I can't do this. So many ISOs to verify. I can start Linux Mint down on which I forgot to show you anyway, so I need to do that probably. Yeah, let's do that in real quick. We got Firefox here. Open that up. Okay. And Linux Mint. The search on Linux Mint. There it is, home. Go straight to downloads here. You go to the home. Do you want to look at that? We're going to download. Vera. That's where you download. Here's that on cinnamon. And you then hear mirrors. Chris Mirror. Press you. Download this man. Right. So we'll come back to the ISO verification. Also, we yeah, got to import your. The new thing on that is, we'll come back to it in a minute, but 
You also have um, another option or two in ESP support, which is the uh, yeah, you have your if you want to install a ISO under the plastic, there's a little bit more update and control of that, I think. The other thing I wanted to show you, which I really I'm going to go back to panel real quick because that was something I forgot to show you. There was this hidden desktop. Desktop. Do that. I got to move my head once again. Move the head. Move the head. Move. Okay, now you shove your. Down here. There's this little bar on the right. You may miss it. It's kind of sort of sitting over there by itself. Right there, show the desktop what the tag says on it. It's this little bar. You click that and it'll, it'll show the desktop what it says right there. And the other thing I wanted to show you is NAWA. Yeah, uh, this is probably something that came in an earlier release because I don't think it's anything in the release notes about NAWA. Specifically, however, it has a back port where you install NAWA on it, which is a wrapper for apt package manager for your command line junkies. Yeah, you install NAWA, you can do this, you can do sudo app search NAWA. That's how I found out it was there, even. I said, I wonder if I checked in, it's there. It's also in there, see right there, second option, NALA. Man, I'm printing for that package manager. I installed it and it works beautifully, just like you'd expect it to. So like go NALA. So you know you have to assume and print just like you do, apt. On all except searches. So we're going to update. Seeing the sync it and it'll say nothing's there eight packages can be upgraded run all this words okay interesting see how that one doesn't say there's anything to upgrade we'll check it out and see if it's there sudo nala upgrade Oh yeah, I was able to determine why these were held. Let's do. Yeah, so let's do sudo apt upgrade. Leave them alone then. I won't do anything for that. Anyway, that's Nala. You can see how much prettier and and more. Easier to read the uh, Nala is than 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 this is. So also you notice when it upgraded it still went and checked the the mirrors to make sure it needed to be updated, need to be updated. So just putting in upgrade Nala upgrade probably means you don't have to put Nala update in front of it in that case. Pretty nice. Nice little option. So, yeah, so if you use command line, you like command line, like I do, now is a nice feature to add into this system. But if you just want to stick to the standard stuff like the uh, graphical managers and stuff like that, you can do that too. You don't have to really do much in command line in Linux Mint. You don't want to. Up to you now. Looks like the update's almost finished there. You know, a lot of people have the copy paste where you do it from from uh, websites and stuff on how to fix your system if something goes wrong, stuff like that. You usually do a command line because you can easily get it done and you can do it over any distro in Linux that way. If you do a graphical manager, it all depends what type of desktop you're on and what instructions they give you. There's so many that would be hard, difficult for anybody to have one set of instructions and be able to go over all graphical managers. 
somebody in Arch or Monjaro or or uh, any other numerous distros you have out there that use different desktops, or even Manjaro, unless you're in Manjaro Cinnamon, then you won't help be helpful if somebody shows you how to do something in Cinnamon specifically. Even then, it may not all, all the options may not be there because it's Cinnamon, and but the system's different. So anyway, we have the ISO. We can show the ISO finally. We have downloaded it. We'll just go over here. Go folders. There's ISO. Click on ISO. Want to verify it? Okay. Verify right there. First option. Also make bootable USB stick. Verify at the same time as I understand. We want to check this out. Now, one of the things I've heard is that if it's a Linux Mint ISO, you don't have to do much else other than click verify. It'll pull all the local files and check some's in there. EPG sign file. It's calculating and check them right now. Pop up there in a minute, hopefully. There it is. There's a check sum. Verified against files on that are on Mac and Linux. If it's all kosher, they will tell you it's good to go. Or it's not one of the two. Thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. Oh. And here, well, I didn't put the URL in there. I don't know how to, what to check it against. So anyway, yeah. Uh, it didn't quite work there because they didn't have the right URL in there to the GPG file. So, well, the problem was there. So it didn't work for us. I asked you, like, go to, go to here. To be able to get. Uh, that happy bring your back And verify. And yeah, there's your semi buggy ISO verification file. The best to go with it, but anyway, yeah, it'll give you that at least. You can download the files. And you had to where you can pull them in locally. But some's path is not defined. So that's an issue for them to figure out, I guess. I mean, it's supposed to work pretty good and things like that, from what I've seen, but sometimes you bust. There's a bust on that, apparently. So that's Linux Mint, Vera 2.1, 21.1, based on Ubuntu 20.04, long-term support till 2027, and that's good. Yeah, I really like Linux Mint, it's one of my go-to distros when I need help or something. It's a nice distro to have on your 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 ISOs especially good for new beginners but even for even for users like me it's a good distro when you just want something that's going to work now this is like they don't even have a server version of Linux Mint or anything like that so it's based basically it's a specifically a desktop version of Linux that is that's a stick, that's where it tries to focus all the attention on. 
this is a pretty job. Now you also have some of your past favorites in there, like the web applicator, webinator, whatever you want to call it, internet, web apps, great web apps off of this. So you have, you, know, you don't have all the, like on a regular Firefox installation, you have all the controls in there, unless you want them, but you can, like not to have those show up just so it's just all in the app itself whatever you do so if you're on a banking you can put your banking bank in there and then you just have to click on that and we'll go right to it like that it's a web app on the menu here and so yeah you got lots of fun things here to look at things that are old things that are new Things you may be aware of, things you probably aren't aware of. There you go. That's the nice meant for you. So if you like Linux Mint, then you like this one. Matter of fact, should you upgrade to Linux Mint, I would, I would advise it. Good. Yeah. It's run pretty well. It keeps automatic updates pretty good if you want to have that. I mean, it doesn't even bog down like Windows does. Where it always makes you sit there and wait for hours on them before, before you log into your system. <laughs> because it's doing installing updates. Thing like that. I had one time on Windows installed an update and took a day or more to process it. I let it run overnight and still was cooking the next morning. I finished the next day. So, if you want productivity, try to land Smith. Now, whether you're a Linux expert or not, if you're not, it's especially helpful because it's more Windows-like than a lot of them. A lot of them. As a matter of fact, I know some distros that are supposed to try to be Windows-like, and they use a cinnamon desktop to make them, to, to pair it, to make it look like Windows. So, next time, we'll look at another distro. Here. I think next time we'll probably look at XFC because they put a new version of the desktop. We'll look what's new on that. Subscribe. Uh, hit the notification bell if you like that. And we'll see you next time. And remember, may the Linux force be with you. Bye.